Let's take a look at how Photoshop is laid out to help you get comfortable with your workspace. To follow along with this tutorial, you can open any image. The first interface element to get familiar with is the document window, which is right here in the center of the screen. This is where you'll work on your images. Over to the right of the document window are the panels that have a variety of image editing controls. There are more panels than just those you see in this panel column. Some of the panels are hidden behind others. For example, here we have a panel group of the color panel and the swatches panel. If I want to see the swatches panel, I can just click its tab and that brings it forward so I can use it. I'll go ahead and select a blue swatch here in the swatches panel and that color will be applied when I use other color features like the brush tool. There are some panels that aren't open on the face of Photoshop. To open one of those panels, go up to the window menu and choose from this list of alphabetical panels a panel that doesn't have a check mark. For example, I'll choose the histogram panel. That opens the histogram panel and after I'm done using it to evaluate the tones in a photograph, for example, I can close it by clicking the double pointed arrow here. Another important interface element is the Tools panel, which is located to the left of the document window. It's this long vertical bar here. If you're not sure what a tool is, you can just hover over its icon, and in a moment you'll see the name of the tool in a tooltip. To select a tool, just click it. There are more tools than you see on the face of the Tools panel. You can click and hold any tool, like the horizontal type tool here, that has a little triangle at its bottom right corner. And you'll see a flyout menu of related tools. So if I want to add text not in a horizontal orientation, but rather in a vertical orientation, I can just slide down to the vertical type tool in this flyout menu and select it from there. Each tool has a number of controls called options, and those are found in the next major interface element, the horizontal options bar up here at the top of the screen. The important thing about the options bar is that it changes depending on what tool is selected. So because I have the vertical type tool selected, I see options for text, like this font size menu here. But keep your eye on the options bar as I select another tool. I'll click on the brush tool, for example. And now the options have changed to offer brush opacity and brush flow and more. Let's go ahead and apply an option. One of the things you'll often want to do when you have a brush tool selected is to change the size of the brush tip. And you can do that using the brush picker option, which is the first option over here on the left of this options bar. I'll click that option to open the brush picker and then I can move the size slider in the brush picker over to the right to increase the size of the brush tip or to the left to decrease it. And then I'll click in a blank area to close the brush picker. I'll move into the image and I'll apply some paint. And by the way, the brush tool is painting with blue because you'll remember that's the color I chose in the swatches panel earlier in this video. By the way, if I change my mind about that paint stroke or whatever I just did in Photoshop, I can undo it by pressing the common keyboard shortcut for undo, which is Command plus Z on a Mac or Control plus Z on a PC. The last major interface element is the menu bar at the very top of the screen. And here you have multiple menus with lots of controls. For example, if I want to close this image, I can select Close from the file menu. And you can go ahead and close the image without saving since we haven't made any permanent changes. So that was a quick look at the major features of the Photoshop interface that you'll use over and over as you work in Photoshop. The document window, the panels, the tools, the tool options, and the menu bar.